Hi, Dr. Biology here. This is a short video on um, Paper 1 revision for this section of organisation. I'm going to briefly cover the main topics that you'll need to revise and then I suggest you look for other um, Dr. Biology YouTube videos that go into these in a bit more depth. This section um, learns about particularly the human digestive system um, and also the breathing systems and you, you look at uh, the blood and the circulatory system. There is also a large section about the heart, about the structure and function of the heart and also about uh, transplants and also dealing with coronary heart disease. There's an important section on enzymes, on digestive enzymes, and also there is a required practical within that. The required practical investigates the effect of pH on the rate of reaction of the enzyme amylase. The other required practical is where you're using chemicals or reagents and you'll be testing, you need to know how to test for a carbohydrate, protein and lipid. You will also need to revise uh, this section of non-communicable diseases and this is looking at um, the effects of lifestyle on these diseases. So looking at risk factors um, related to um, things like smoking, obesity, the effects of alcohol um, and also looking at carcinogens and talking about cancer. And the final section um, looks at the plant tissues, organs and systems. So this includes the uh, tissues such as um, the structure and function of a leaf, but also looking at uh, transport mechanisms such as the xylem and phloem. So as you can see it's quite a large section of work, but I'll briefly go through the main points that you'll need to revise. The first section covers the human digestive system. You would have covered this in Key Stage 3 Science um, and the digestive system is a great example of an organ system with several organs working together. It will be useful if you learn to be able to um, label the digestive system but also know what each individual thing is. An important aspect of the digestive system is enzymes. So you are going to have to learn the three different enzymes, their locations and their functions. After revising the section um, on digestive enzymes, it's really worthwhile uh, looking at the lock and key theory, which is a simplified model to explain enzyme action. So the substrate is like a key and the enzyme's active site is like a lock and obviously the key fits the lock and then what occurs is that the enzyme can then break down the uh, substrate into products so for example if it was amylase it would be taking starch that is the substrate and the starch that uh, fits the active site in amylase and then it's producing sugars it's probably a good idea at this point to remind yourself of the required practicals. So there are two required practicals in the organisation section and you can find both of these in uh, Doctor Biology. Um, so you've got the required practical three which is the food tests with carbohydrates, lipids and proteins and the second one which is actually investigating enzymes now. I investigated temperature and um, specifically but uh, in the required practical it mentions pH but it's exactly the same principles apply and that's they're really good videos if I don't say so myself and they'll be very useful for your revision. The next section is related to the heart and blood vessels but as you probably realize looking at this picture this is showing the breathing system. Um, you do need to know a bit about the knowledge of the lungs in this specification it does mention though that all you need to know for the lungs is about the trachea, the bronchi, which is the bronchioles as well, the alveoli and capillary network around the alveoli. 
If you remember, in when you studied cell biology, you would have looked at transport across membranes, and probably you already know a bit about alveoli from revising that section. A major part of this section is the study of the heart as an organ that pumps blood around the body in a double circulatory system. You'll need to know um, all of these parts that they are specifying here, okay? Particularly if you're doing higher tier. Now, um, a word of advice. You don't need to uh, know the names, the specific names of the valves, okay? It's really important uh, you know this. The knowledge of the names of the heart valves is not required. So you can just call them heart valves. You'll also need to know about the coronary arteries that are found on the outside of the heart, as obviously they're very important when we talk about coronary heart disease. In humans and other mammals, blood vessels are arranged into what we call a double circulatory system. So one transport system carries the blood from the heart to the lungs, and the other transport system carries blood from your heart to all other organs of your body and back again. And you'll, be able, you'll need to be able to do that and be able to label the arrows of the direction of the blood. You then need to revise the fact that the body contains three different types of blood vessels. So these are arteries, veins and capillaries. And you should be able to explain how the structure of these vessels relates to their function. So, for example, arteries has a thick layer of muscle and elastic fibre due to the high pressure from when the heart contracts. Um, the capillary, for example, has a sing, uh, is single cell thick, therefore allows uh, diffusion to occur quickly. You might then want to talk about veins. So veins have valves, and these valves um, stop the backflow of blood and means that the blood will flow in one direction. And the way that the blood moves is through uh, contracted skeletal muscles, and also there is low pressure in the veins but much lower than the artery as it's going back to the heart. You'll be expected to know about blood cells, so tissue consisting of plasma in which red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets are suspended. You need to know the functions of each of these components as you can see here. It also does say in the specification that you should be able to recognise different types of blood cells in a photograph or diagram. For example, in the bottom right hand corner we've got a, um, a photomicrograph of um, white blood cells and red blood cells in plasma. White blood cells you can see are the ones there that have a nucleus inside them, whereas the red blood cells are the many numerous red blood cells around, uh, around have a round shape but no nucleus. And obviously they're dissolved in plasma, not dissolved, sorry, they're suspended in plasma. The next few sections now go into what we call non-communicable diseases and a key one is the uh, about coronary heart disease and cardiovascular disease and particularly how is it treated. Now it does specify and it's really clearly specified um, by the examiners that you need to know the advantages and disadvantages of treating the dis cardiovascular disease by drugs such as statins, mechanical devices, so understanding how stents work, um, artificial hearts, so those are plastic hearts as you can see down here, um, and also possibly valves, and then finally you need to understand heart transplants. You'll need to know how coronary heart disease occurs with layers of fatty material building up inside the coronary arteries which narrow them, so that's going to reduce the flow of blood and therefore result in a lack of oxygen for the heart muscle. There is a short section on cancer, as this is again a non-communicable disease, and you'll definitely need to learn the difference between benign and malignant tumours. This fits into the subject of lifestyle risk factors for various types of cancer, but also there's a genetic risk factor for some cancers. So, uh, lifestyle and non-communicable diseases, these include 
factors such as um, well diet, smoking, lack of exercise, misuse of alcohol, and there is a long list uh, where causal mechani mechanisms have been proven for some risk factors but not in others, but it is showing the aspect of person's lifestyle and the substances in a person's body or environment and how it affects them. Key thing to remember is that many diseases are caused by the interaction of a number of factors. More than likely they will give you data to look at in the exam and they'll expect you to analyse that data. This next section is all about plants and I think many, many students forget how important plants are and also the examiners do examine you on plant tissues, organs and systems. So don't leave this to the last minute. You particularly will need to know the structure and function of the leaf as this is a plant organ and you need to uh, know how to label a leaf and understand the main uh, functions of a leaf. You then need to understand um, how things move within the leaf, particularly through the xylem and phloem. So in the xylem you'll need to understand how water is taken up, um, up from the roots to the stems and the leaves, and how uh, transpiration, it, the, which is the loss of water from the plant, um, is affected by things like temperature, humidity, air movement and light intensity. You'll need to know the basic structure of the xylem tissue and the phloem tissue. And the xylem tissues are composed of hollow tubes strengthened by lignin. They're adapted for transporting water. And the phloem tissue transports dissolved sugars from, from the leaves to the rest of the plant. And you'll need to know a bit about translocation as well. And finally, I would remember the experiment that you did with a potometer. So this is measuring the rate of water loss from a cut shoot. And as you can see, there is an air bubble. And that air bubble, over time, if I just draw it on there, the air bubble uh, in time will move this way. And you can actually measure the rate of water uptake uh, or rate of water loss by transpiration from the stomata of the leaves. It's well worth going through that in your notes. And that brings us to the end of this section related to organisation. As I said, it's a large section of work, so please do factor in enough time to revise this section. And remember to use some exam papers. Exam papers are found on the, the school website. Um, and also I'll be doing some more videos, uh, in-depth videos, on this section of work. If you haven't already, please do sign up to Doctor Biology and there'll be more revision videos coming soon.